Giving himself a nickname meaning Prophet of Swag, Nick Young has appeared in NBA headlines over the last 10 years for many of the right and wrong reasons. But as far as basketball goes, what happened to Swaggy P? Let's rewind and roll through the career of one of the NBA's most notorious gifts with that famous three-point miss celebration, hopefully not a metaphor for his career. Before we get into all that, if you want to win a PS5 with NBA 2K22 and Madden NFL 22 included, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. Nick Young made a name for himself in California as far back as early high school. He attended Cleveland High School in suburban Reseda, California, and took the state by storm averaging 27.2 points and 10.8 rebounds in his senior year in 2004. He was listed as one of the top 10 prospects in the country and he was putting up outrageous numbers, scoring 56 points in one game and grabbing 23 boards in another. As a shooting guard, his 57.3% field goal percentage and 46.8 three-point percentage sent shockwaves around the country and had every scout sitting up to recognize the potential that lay before them. Staying in California, Young managed to get into USC after five years of high school and three rounds of SATs. He then played for USC for three years and was in the All-Pac-10 first team in the 2005-06 and 2006-07 seasons. His field goal percentage in what would be his final year was sitting at 52.5%, with a three-point percentage of 44. Nick was just an excellent shooter. He put up decent college numbers too, averaging 17 points per game in the last two seasons. Leading his team to the Sweet 16, he managed to overcome the then National Player of the Year, Kevin Durant, in the second round by defeating the Texas Longhorns. Young smartly opted out of his final year and was drafted 16th overall in the 2007 draft by the Washington Wizards. In his first couple of seasons with reduced minutes, Nick still held a decent field goal percentage but was struggling to make any real impact. But he hit the headlines in 2010 when he was fined $10,000 for allegedly stoking the flames, following an event that led to Gilbert Arenas brandishing four firearms into the locker room and telling Javaris Crittenden to pick one to shoot him with. Javaris pulled out a gun of his own and as a result the locker room was cleared and hefty fines and suspensions were handed out. When asked about the incident years later, Young stated, We like each other but don't like each other. Like we go back and forth. I did have his back, but I kind of started it though. I was cracking jokes, telling him he was soft. Young was no stranger to the tragedy of gun violence himself, having dealt with some horrific circumstances that haunted his past, including the shooting and murder of his brother Charles. When Nick was just five years old when a notorious LA street gang mistakenly identified him as a member of a rival gang, Daniel H. Forer, the director and producer of Second Chance Season, spoke fondly of Young in a documentary about Nick coming through the ranks at high school and struggling to deal with the fact that members of the same gang who killed his brother were in the classroom. Sometime after the doc, Foyer said, Some athletes play for themselves, some play for their school, but Nick was playing to heal his family. When he plays well, they focus on the future. When he doesn't, there's a backslide. It's a heavy responsibility for a kid. Following the Arenas incident, Young actually improved his game as it appeared he had turned a corner. With more minutes, his points per game improved to 17.4 for the 2010-11 season, and he upped his field goal percentage despite the fact that he was taking more shots to 44.1%. A career high of 43 points against the Sacramento Kings and another solid season averaging 16.6 .6 points on less minutes with a similar field goal percentage meant Young was very much in the shop window for some teams mounting a challenge. So along came the Clippers, ready to bring their boy back to California where he made his high school and college name. Of course, going to high school at Cleveland in Reseda, going to college at USC, hometown guy back here in LA with the Clippers. Now, what are you looking forward to contributing to this Clippers team right here? Uh, you know, I'm just going to bring that energy. You know, a young guy out here, you know, we got already messing with me, you know. So. My man, my man <laughs> Nick. In March 2012, the Clippers made a shrewd trade bringing Young in as a backup shooting guard where he eventually helped them reach their first playoffs in six years, throwing up 19 points against the Oklahoma City Thunder to clinch the spot. After an impressive playoffs managing a superb 51.5 three-point percentage and 43.3% from the field, Young then signed with Philadelphia on a one-year deal. The Clippers weren't convinced with his regular season stats and felt that they couldn't justify giving him the big contract with such spurts of inconsistency. At Philly, he kept his rep clean and played good enough basketball to earn himself a one-year deal with an option. He played lights out in his first season, shooting 43.5% from the field and gaining a career-high points per game average with 17.9. This earned him a four-year, $21.5 million contract in 2014. After missing the first 10 games of the season, Young managed a season-high of 29 points against the San Antonio Spurs. 
but his stats and minutes would start to drop. Much of his personal life was surrounded by controversy as Young at the time was dating Australian rapper Iggy Azalea. The pair got engaged in 2015, but the engagement ended very publicly a year later when a video surfaced of Nick Young openly talking about how he had an affair with another woman. Soon then after, Nick Young's former girlfriend, Kiana Green, confirmed that she was 22 weeks pregnant with Young's second child. Speaking at the time, Iggy said, I broke up with Nick because I found out he had brought another woman into our home while I was away and caught them on the security footage. I have never even been told by Nick that his baby mother is pregnant, so if this is true, I'm finding out via E! News. This is just like a second shot to the chest, and I feel like I don't even know who the hell it is I've been loving all this time. With the colossal weight of this incident and of course the responsibility as a father, Nick's stats didn't climb off the floor for a couple of years until he regrouped in the 2016-17 season, which earned him a move to the much-coveted Golden State Warriors. All of a sudden, Nick was averaging 17 minutes a game in 80 games of a season for a dynasty team that boasted Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Andre Iguodala, and Draymond Green all at their peak. He went on to help them sweep Cleveland in the finals and take his first NBA championship. And that would unfortunately be the final shining chapter in his NBA career as Young was arrested that summer after allegedly failing to cooperate during a traffic stop. He posted $10,000 bail and was then signed and waived by the Denver Nuggets just 20 days after he entered the building playing only four games. Young was let go because at the time, the Nuggets were expected to activate guards Gary Harris and Will Barton. Consistently posting on social media that he's ready to play seems to have had no effect on teams looking to sign him over the last three years. It was thought he would have been more of a distraction for a team than an asset, which is unfortunate because he's never found an NBA team since. When the Lakers were looking to fill an open roster spot just last year, Swaggy P threw his name out on Instagram again in an almost open an attempt to get it back, saying he was available. The Lakers went on to sign Dion Waiters, a gut punch for a player who not only had come off the back of an NBA championship, but was once a top 20 pick in the NBA draft. We're not saying Waiters isn't good, but trying to prove yourself late in the game once you've had a long NBA career knocks the confidence out of any veteran. Then, after two years outside the NBA, Nick announced he would sign with the Zhejiang Lions of the Chinese Basketball Association. Another one bites the dust as even that didn't materialize. So Young went back to looking for teams and now it seems he has been linked to join the enemies for the 2021 BIG3 season, serving as their new team captain. And it looks like we've come full circle because of his coach, none other than Gilbert Arenas, Young's former Wizards teammate who caused that initial controversy all those years ago. The shame about this move is that Young clearly could have been selected by numerous franchises, but they chose to stay away. No one even gave him the opportunity to prove himself, and the final second peak years of his career between the ages of 32 to 36 are now firmly in the rearview mirror. There's no doubting for the last few years now, Shaggy P has become a less popular nickname to throw around as it's less fashionable to follow someone who simply can't get a game. But that doesn't mean he's lost the aura that gave him a significant footprint in the last decade in the NBA. Furthermore, his belief in himself surely has to count for something. And although it's sad to see regular updates on Twitter or Instagram of Young vying to get picked up, when he's clearly past his best, it doesn't mean he should stop trying. As much as his career has been overshadowed by controversy, he's still got a couple years left in the bank. Here's hoping Young stays out of trouble and enjoys the last of his career in a league where the fans will get behind him as long as he doesn't get down on himself and breeds the confidence he showed sparks of throughout his NBA and college career. What do you think of Nick Young's career? Did he underachieve or has he made the best with what he's got? Where will he end up after this?